I'm David Cannon with the Hollywood MMA Show and MMA Show News here at Glory 10, Ontario, California. And I'm joined with Shane Del Rosario. How are you doing, sir? Good, thanks for having me. How's it going, guys? You, you originally started with a kickboxing background and now you're doing MMA. What's the differences between MMA and, and kickboxing? Um, obviously, wrestling. <laughs> you got all shot for takedowns. Um, I started my career, I started out with kickboxing. Um, I got the WBC uh, World Champion belt. Um, but some of the opportunities came up through Strike Force and, um, excuse me, Elite XC. And uh, the, <clears throat> the opportunity was a lot better pay, things like that. So I did make the transition. My love is for Muay Thai, though. But uh, MMA has really uh, paved my way for my career. And uh, it's been going really well. So looking to get back in the cage, hopefully by the end of the year. No, just um, for someone that's that not used to being wrestling and getting into MMA, what are some big advantages and disadvantages of having the stand-up already down pat? Uh, you know, it's, it's good to have the stand-up and uh, developing my wrestling has helped out a lot because then I can be more comfortable with my stand-up moving. Um, obviously, you know, it's a different pace uh, and wrestling can really tire you out. Um, my last fight, I learned my lesson, my first, uh, two fights ago, learned my lesson with takedowns and elbows. I gotta be in shape and uh, I gotta use my movement. You know, I'm a good heavyweight. Um, I'm fast, um, I got good footwork, and I gotta stick to that to, and uh, take away the, the takedowns. Now, is there a toll, uh, a toll from going toe to toe in these wars where you're just training punches and kicks as opposed to MMA where it's more of a, a technical um, mind game? It, can this take a toll on you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, MMA, get, MMA with small gloves, it can take one, one punch, one elbow, it could be over, one big cut. Um, there's a lot more technical, a lot more numbers here. Uh, we saw some of these fights with huge punches, you know, and some huge kicks. So uh, definitely those guys are banged up after, uh, and especially during the Grand Prix tournament, you know, you have multiple, multiple fights in one night, going to be hurting that night for sure. Now, these, these type of uh, tournaments, do you think that these will succeed in MMA, doing these four-man, six-man type tournaments at the old UFC days? Um, I, I think so. I mean, uh, it's definitely tough. Um, uh, you know, injuries as is, it kind of is problematic when it comes to the tournament styles. And I, you know, um, during like a, a three-month period, but uh, it definitely would be interesting to see. You know, it definitely takes a level of toughness up and uh, really comes brings the true animals out. Now, what can we look forward to from you in the future? I know you said there's some things you want to work on. What are I mean, the wrestling, the cardio, are those things that you you put you patch up some holes yeah and, and what, what's next for you yeah number one uh, I'm just feeling 100% healthy and uh, I'm down 20 pounds from my last fight uh, I was up close to 250 now I'm down 230 so I'm feeling a lot better able to run I'm in shape um, so I, I really get a uh, give a good showing for the fans um, you know for UFC and for my teammate uh, really show my, my true fighting style so I'm excited to get back in there um, and get a win finally it's been rough I've had two tough losses and decisive losses uh, being knocked out, you know, so I'm anxious to get back in there and get a win and uh, get my momentum back and uh, hopefully uh, get on a win streak. And just let two more questions. Uh, mentally, does that take a toll when, when you do get knocked out two times in a row? What kind of toll does that take on you mentally? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, you get on a streak and, and you start winning and you think, you know, if you're kind of unbeatable, you know, <laughs> and uh, I was on a 12 0 win streak and I was doing really well and, uh, you know, come to the ranks and, uh, and, and, uh, Put, put it in my work and uh, and I finally made it a big show, but I got stopped decided to be twice, you know. But I, I took it as a, as a wake-up call. I remember the first interview I gave, I, you know, I had to say thank you for getting my ass kicked, and it really kind of showed me that I'm at the top level right now and top competition, and I got to be my A game, and I got to be smart about it, you know. You can't just go in and think you're going to land a punch and knock somebody out. You know, those guys are equally as good, and uh, you got your skill and uh, keep your composure. You see kickboxing being big in the America. I mean, I know what's big in the Ta -da. Netherlands, in, in Europe, in Japan, but is this something that could be big in, in the United States? I think so. Um, that's something that I don't, the United States sees a lot is some of these K1 tournaments or some of these the Grand Prix style tournaments where it's three minute rounds, you know, no elbows, no clinch, but the guy's going out and banging it. And it's a lot of excitement, you know, it's not a lot. Of, Sometimes they don't understand maybe the Muay Thai clinch game or some of the wrestling and it loses some of the, the focus of some of the newer fans. But definitely you can't say anyone in the crowd right now is not uh, blown away by some of these, these uh, fights so far and the ones to come. And this is my last question because I don't want you to knock me out. <laughs> Big fight coming up October, your weight division, two, two gigantic monsters, Cain Velasquez, Junior Dos Santos. Trilogy. Trilogy. I actually, I actually wrote an article that said 
I see them fighting two more times after this, <laughs> just because they're they're that good. Yeah. How does this fight go down? You know, it, it, it's it's been a good back and forth so far, and if you see it. They're two small heavyweights, not like usual, 250, 260. They're down around 230, and they're going hard for the whole five minute rounds. I mean, they're pushing the pace. Um, Cain Blasters looked really good the last fight, you know, and Dos Santos has obviously that knockout power. Uh, but, you know, it, it's going to be good back and forth. Who knows on this one? Um, you know, Cain, Cain looked really good the last fight, though, man. It's going to be hard to beat. And, uh, you know, hopefully they don't have two more fights. Some of us other heavyweights can step it up, start getting some winning streaks, and uh, be a contender soon. So you, so you're going with Cain Velasquez then? Is that what you nah, said? I don't know. My heart goes out to Juno Santos, man. I, I got, I got a chance to train with him uh, for his Krokop fight, you know, and uh, we banged at it. We went at it for like a week straight, and uh, it was like some of the hardest part I've had, and it made my fight easy, you know. So, uh, I, you know, I've known Ed Suarez and those guys, and I were all friends, and but uh, it's gonna be a good fight. So, it's gonna call that night and see. And did you knock him down in sparring? <laughs> no, it was back and forth, though, man. We begged you. We went at it. We went hard for a week. Yeah. So, so you're saying neutral? Yeah, I don't know, man. It just depends who shows up and what kind of fight it brings, you know. What about what about Silva Weidman in December? Do you have a clear pick? On that? Uh, I always want to see Silva win, you know. People want want to see him lose, you know. But I, I really appreciate his athleticism and just his talent level, you know. I like it. But Weidman's a tough opponent as well, you know. And uh, it's gonna be a good fight. But uh, my my heart's out there for Silva for sure. That's Shane Del Rosario. I don't want to get knocked out, so that was my last question. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're here, Glory World Series 10, Ontario, California, for the Hollywood MMA Show and MMA Show News.